Reality Revealed Part 9 The right brain people sometimes can appear to be away with the fairies and they may have difficulty function in a left brain society. It's all about balance and actually being whole brained and to be in this world left brain but not of it right brain the corpus castellum is a bridge a thick bundle of nerve fibres connecting the hemispheres and this is supposed to provide the balance by sharing information and perception between them the two distinct personalities of the hemispheres are confirmed by the fact that when the corpus callosum is deactivated, the person operates in two realities or personalities that perceive independently of each other. There are more limitations when communication between them is severed often to stop severe epileptic seizures and the hemispheres go their own way. This can cause literally a split personality known as split brain syndrome like neuro schizophrenia one side can do something or perceive something without the other being aware of it studies have revealed that people with a disconnected or non-functioning corpus callosum can be shown the same image with each eye but the second one has no memory of already seeing it with the other the right brain controls the left side of the body and vice versa A woman who was having a stroke in her corpus callosum said that her left hand had a will of its own. The hand would close doors that the right hand opened, closed books that the right hand had opened, or snatched money back from the right hand. They were making decisions independently of each other. The corpus callosum does not have to be severed to impact communication between the two sides, however. This can happen through malfunction, whether natural or systematic via chemical, electrical, electromagnetic interference. The brain communicates and processes information 
electrically and electromagnetically and on one level has a chemical structure. Frequencies are decoded into thought and perception. Put that lot together and you have incredible potential to manipulate brain function and corpus callosum malfunction through electrical, electromagnetic and chemical influence can be induced. What must be the impact on the brain of technologically generated electromagnetism? The cloud. The effect on the corpus callosum could, for example, induce a state of cognitive dissonance, which is to believe two contradictory things at the same time, while well, thinking both are true. Human society is drowning in electromagnetism. And it's also dominated by the conditioning, left brain conditioning. Reducing the activation of the right brain. We are all under a lifelong bombardment. of perception that stimulates the left brain at the expense of the right. This can be overridden if your mind is powerful and independent enough. But this can be a challenge given that brain programming starts at the very earliest age. Calculated education, which is really programming. TV programs are not called programs by accident. People of my generation were totally programmed in terms of perception by the TV. And as we know, education focuses on the left brain, five sense subjects as numbers, language, memorising facts for examinations and presenting the world as a place of apartness and division. Division is always emphasised. And particularly today, we're given many, many, many reasons to make ourselves different from someone else. Divisive. Also, right brain stimulation is marginalised or deleted in the fields of art, music, drama, poetry, creative sports and imagination through spontaneous ad lib play and improvisation. Daydreaming from people of my generation was always seen to be 
a bad thing, a lackadaisical. Stop daydreaming. And get on with your work. Stick to the brief. Stick to the programme. Get with the programme. You've got your head in the clouds. But great music, art and creativity all comes from daydreaming. But we are conditioned into being busy. Is busy a virtue? Would it not be more impressive if someone said, I have plenty of time to, to think, I've got plenty of time to reflect, plenty of time to contemplate, plenty of time to dream. But society says, no, keep busy. Why are you busy? Is it because you're inefficient? Is it because other people are being around? Why do people boast about this? Shouldn't it be more impressive if someone says, I've got plenty of time for myself? Should kids of school age have more time to play? What do you actually learn at school? It's important to learn how to read, how to write, maybe how to speak and socialise. That could all be done uh, one day a week, leave me four days free and a weekend. So why is the need to extend school hours and get into homework? It's because you have to keep with the programme. We don't want you drifting away into your own world. We want you to be part of the hive mind. The format of Western education, essentially left brain indoctrination, has been established across the world thanks to colonialism and then funding from charities and non-governmental organisations, NGOs. Life is lived through information, specialisation, which is compartmentalisation, only on a need-to-know basis. You know, a, you know a lot about a little. Reductionism, the analysis and description of a complex phenomenon in terms of its simple or fundamental constituents and an explanation of complex life science processes and phenomena in terms of the laws of physics and chemistry. Where did these laws come from? Out of nowhere? Laws of physics? All were coincidence? Reductionism sees parts, not holes. So you can get a PhD in uh, something which is uh, not that important to anyone. Radiation belts around a black hole. What use is that to anyone? Does that make you clever? No, it means that your mind is not being used for anything useful. Results of all this education can be seen in a major study. Per Kyung He Kim, a professor of education at the College of William and Mary in Virginia. He studied large numbers of school aged children between kindergarten and twelfth grade. 
it's a she, as she, she found the following. A massive decline of creativity. Right brain. As children have become less emotionally expressive. Right brain. Less energetic. Less talkative. And verbally expressive. Less humorous. Right brain. That's an important one. Uh, sense of humour. Not getting allowed now. You can't laugh at anything. Everything's got to be very serious. Less lively and passionate. Right brain. Less perceptive. Right brain. Less apt to connect seemingly irrelevant things. Right brain. Less synthesizing. Right brain. And less likely to see things from a different angle. Right brain. So that's what she found in the 12th grade study. So, to use a fancy word, it's almost as if we've been infantilized, which is treated like children. You see adverts, uh, there's usually people dancing around in a silly way and prancing about and uh, singing and doing stupid things. And these are middle-aged people, but they're acting like toddlers. And this is the theme of a lot of advertising. Quick, childish types of adverts selling you anything. People dancing and singing in a stupid way and they're in their mid-forties, all very cool and funny. It's really reducing people to a childlike state, making people dependent and uh, not really uh, critical in their thinking. 